Well, guys, it's the end of January now, and that means that spring is only several weeks away. And I'm already kind of getting the itch to get out in the woods. You know, I want to go camping and uh, trail riding, do some mudding, you know, get out there in the woods and have a good time. I just can't wait. I hate wintertime because you end up just kind of sitting around and it's cold all the time. And it seems like it's dark and wet all the time and you can't get outside. Not really any work. Well, not a lot of work that has to be done. So it just gets really boring and depressing, you know. So anyway, a couple of weeks ago, um, you know, I went and looked at some trailers. I decided that this year I want to get a different trailer. You know, these two ATVs, we've been making it work on my little utility trailer. It's a six and a half by 12 single axle. And like I said, we made it work, but it's not fun because one of the ATVs has to be loaded on the front of the trailer sideways, which means you got to push it up and over the rail. So the bottom of the ATV scrapes, uh, I kind of tore mine up a little bit. Um, last time I was doing an oil change on it, I noticed that the, the uh, skid plate underneath was ripped and torn up and one of the protective splash guards was ripped loose. So it's just not real good for the machine. It's not real good for the trailer either because it scuffs up the powder coat on that top rail. So it's going to end up rusting eventually. Just not a good situation. So this year I want to get a different trailer. I want to get a longer trailer. And so what I did was I came out here and I was like, okay, how am I going to load these ATVs? Well, we're going to do them end to end like this, right? So I mocked this up and, uh, you know, you want a few inches here between the machines, just in case one of your straps comes loose and they start rocking around a little bit. You don't want your ATVs banging into each other. So you need a few inches of space there. And then you can imagine that like, if this is the rear of the trailer right here, you want a few inches back here also for the same reason. And then up here in the front of the trailer, it'd be nice to have a little bit of space. So when I mocked it up like this and I took some measurements, what I found was that a 16 foot trailer just won't work. Now it's true. You could get 16 feet, you know, would get these machines on the deck, but it's just not enough space because what happens is they end up putting your tie down hooks over here, right? Let's say this is the front of the trailer and your D ring tie down is here. So you'd have to go around the front tire to strap down the machine which just puts too much stress on the front there. Same thing in the rear. I mean, 16 feet was gonna be really tight. So after I uh, actually mocked it up and started looking at it, I realized that I actually need something a little longer than that. So, you know, I went to the trailer dealership and I started looking around at utility trailers and open deck car haulers, trying to see which one would be the better way to go. I was looking mostly at 18 to 20 foot trailers yeah, you know, I was looking at 16s also just to see what was out there. But I think I kind of want like an 18 or a 20 foot. And what I found kind of shocked me. So you're starting out at around $5,200 for a utility trailer. Uh, and then, you, know, you can go up from there. You know, some of the ones that had like the heavier axles under them. Um, they had some that had the removable sides so you could load an ATV from the side or a pallet or whatever you wanted to do. Uh, you know, there's some features you can get on them, but they start out around $5,200 and then they go up from there. The one that I really liked the most had a sticker on it uh, that said it was $6,900. So <laughs> we're talking a utility trailer here. I think it was an 18 foot, seven by 18 utility trailer with a couple little features on it that would have been nice for us and what we do and it was $6,900. I mean, the prices on trailers has just gotten insane. So I came back home and I was talking to my son. He's the one that rides and camps with me most of the time. And uh, I was telling him, you know, about these trailers and showing them to him. And he said, you know, dad, he's like, what you really need to do is get another enclosed trailer. You know, and I kind of, I would really like to, but I had not really been looking at them heavy because I just assumed that those would be astronomical. You know, if a utility trailer is $6,900, then good grief, how much would an enclosed trailer be, right? But he's right, though. That's kind of what I really need. Well, I guess I should say want. Need and want are two different things, right? But I really want an enclosed trailer. 
Because here's the thing. I've been camping my whole life. You know, when I was young, our parents took us camping. And then uh, there was a guy in our church that also liked to get groups of people together and go camping and canoeing and all that. When I was in college, my buddies and I would take our ATVs and go ride and camp. Uh, and then when I got married, of course, we started taking our kids and we went tent camping. We always slept in a tent, you know, my whole life. I've, countless times I've been in a tent. Uh, but it seems like that more times than not, when I'm sleeping in a tent, inevitably in the middle of the night, a thunderstorm rolls in. And it is not fun to be in a tent in a thunderstorm. <laughs> so uh, there have been two occasions in my life when I was out primitive camping like that and we had a tornado warning for my location uh, in fact in both cases there was a tornado within a couple of miles of where i was camping really really not fun uh, but yeah just the wind and the rain you wake up at 3 a.m and you hear the rain on your tent sometimes you reach around your mattress there your air mattress and you feel water in the floor already and even if you don't then you can't sleep again the rest of the night because you're just laying there hoping and praying that the rain doesn't come into the tent it just gets really annoying not to mention the fact that uh, if you tent camp then once we get to the off-road park we got to find a spot clean it out set the tent up move all of our clothes into the tent blow up the air mattress or put up the cot or whatever the case might be you know you spend some time setting everything up and then usually it rains at some point over those two or three days you're out there and then when it's time to, to, leave, to leave to go home, then you got to unpack all of that. Now the tent is wet and it's got leaves stuck to it and everything else. So you got to pack it all up. And then when you get home, you got to set it back up again so it'll all dry out because you can't put your tent away in storage wet because it'll mildew. So it's just a hassle. And I guess what I'm getting to is I'm to the point where I'm just sick and tired of sleeping in a tent. I love being outdoors. I love camping, everything about it but I just don't want to fool with a tent anymore. And the great thing about the enclosed trailer, you know, I had one a couple of years ago and I set it up for primitive camping. It's perfect because you can sleep in there and not have to worry about any of that. We had a couple of real mattresses, not cots, not air mattresses, but actual real mattresses uh, that we would haul in the trailer with us. And after we unload the ATVs, you just lay the mattresses down, put bed sheets on them, put your pillows on there, you're ready to go. You know, there's nothing to set up, nothing to unpack. If the weather gets bad in the middle of the night, who cares? You know, uh, a couple years ago, we went up to the Badlands off-road park up in Attica, Indiana. In the middle of the night, here comes a thunderstorm. And uh, I was sleeping in the trailer with my son. And so I just rolled back over and went back to sleep. Didn't have to worry about it. And that's really nice. You know, if you, so if I could just take the tent element out of camping, then I'm good. <laughs> so, so having an enclosed trailer is really what I wanted uh, anyway. So after he said that, I went back onto a website of a big dealership here in Kentucky, started looking at enclosed trailers. And believe it or not, you can get a 7x16 enclosed trailer starting at $6,900. So if you go up to say like an 18 foot or something like that, 20 foot, you add a little bit of price. But the point is, you don't really spend a lot more money to get an enclosed trailer. So long story short, that's what I decided to do. I was like, okay, if we're gonna do this, let's do it right. So I ordered up a new enclosed trailer. Now the great thing about it is, like I said, we'll be able to camp out of it. We're gonna set it up for camping. So we'll do a couple of videos on that. That'll be really cool. Um, obviously we can haul the ATVs. I could also put the tractor in there if I want to, if I need to go take the tractor for service, or if a buddy calls me up and says, Hey, uh, can you come over and help me with this project? Rare that that's going to happen. But if it does, I can put the tractor in this enclosed trailer and haul it. You know, if I want to haul the challenger to a car show or something, I can do that. So, uh, it's going to be very versatile and we'll be able to camp out of it. And so I, I feel like it's a better bang for the buck. So what I ordered is an eight and a half wide by 20 foot long. And the reason why is because you can't get, uh, from this place where I ordered the trailer, you can't get a seven foot wide, 20 foot long. So I went to an eight and a half wide, 20 foot long. Uh, that'll give me plenty of space. So when I put the ATVs in there like this, then up in the front, I will have a couple of extra feet here that I can set up my tabletop. I'm gonna put a cabinet in there, microwave, just some basic stuff. 
It's not going to be a full-fledged camper with plumbing and all of that. But I can set up a primitive, you know, area up here to live out of if you want to look at it that way. So the 20-foot length will give me, you know, the, the length that I need to do that. The 8.5 width will let me put the car in there, tractor, whatever I want to in the future. Plus, we can camp out of it, so it'll be really, really versatile. Uh, I ordered it up with 5,200 pound axles, so it'll have a little bit more gross vehicle weight rating. Again, if I want to put the car, the tractor, something like that in there, I won't have to worry about payload. Uh, we ordered the, this is important if you're getting an enclosed trailer, we ordered the flush mount RV style lock on the side door. You don't want to get an enclosed trailer that only has a bar lock on the side door if you're going to camp out of it. Uh, trust me on this. So we got that ordered up. Uh, we put windows in it. Went ahead and had them from the factory put a couple of windows in there for me. Again, that just makes it a lot more pleasant to camp out of. If you do have storms in the middle of the night, or if you hear animals out there at your campsite, you can look out the window, see what's going on. So we went ahead and ordered a couple of windows in there too. We got some additional ceiling height. It's going to be a seven foot tall. And that way, you know, in the future, <clears throat> if I decide to, say, trade this in and get a side-by-side -side again or some other kind of UTV that's going to be taller, I'll still be able to load it up in there. Uh, the tractor will fit, that kind of thing. So we got a little extra roof height. So, uh, you know, it's going to be really nice. I'm excited. Uh, kind of show you what the, uh, the base model of this trailer that I ordered looks like. Uh, but, of course, ours is going to be a little different because we added a few features to it, but I'm really excited. It's gonna be great. It's gonna make our camping trips or off-road trips a lot more fun this year. Probably gonna be, I don't know, six weeks or so before the trailer comes in, um, but it's gonna be really awesome and I'm super excited about it. So yeah, look forward to that. And like I said, we'll do a couple of videos. We're gonna add a few things to it to make it, you know, like a primitive camper again. Um, so it's gonna be awesome. But anyway, that's going to be uh, what's going on here uh, in, the, in the short term, just kind of getting ready for the season, you know. We're going to do some other things this year too, probably, you know, fishing and that kind of thing. Uh, getting ready to go tomorrow to South Carolina to do some hog hunting. We're going to hunt wild boars the rest of this week. Uh, but yeah, I'm really anxious for spring because I want to get out and ride and camp and uh, just do the mo moto sports kind of thing, you know. So the enclosed trailers guys are super nice for camping for ATV riding. I think it's getting to be a popular option because, you know, people who buy toy hauler campers, you know, the prices on everything's going up and those are getting to the point where it's just almost unrealistic to go buy a new toy hauler camper and even the used ones can be outrageous. So with an enclosed trailer, you have more flexibility. You can haul more things in there. That was the other thing, a traditional toy hauler camper. When I did measurements on the garage area, I wasn't going to be able to get two ATVs in there, um, at least not easily. You know, I saw one guy who figured out a way to make it work, but it was a lot of work. You know, he basically had to use a pallet jack type thing to turn an ATV around, and then he loaded up another one and jacked it up and turned it around. He just had to shoehorn them in there, and that just defeats the purpose of what I'm trying to do here. So an enclosed trailer is the way to go, more flexibility, and it just basically is going to work better. And yeah, you probably noticed that we still have the old 05 F-150. This is something else that we need to work on this year. This is going to be my son's truck, and we've been doing some light restoration to it. You remember we did the interior in a video not that long ago, and it looks super nice now. Uh, but we got to start doing a little bit of uh, mechanical work on it. Just try to get it running good. It's not too bad now, but we're just going to kind of fix it up a little bit, make it run nice. Look at the interior. Oh my goodness, he's already got some dirt on it. He'll have to clean that. But the interior looks nice now. It's in pretty good shape for this old girl. So it'll make him a real nice truck. We just got a few more little odds and ends to do to it. And he's kind of excited. And I'm sure that eventually it'll get a small lift kit, probably some wheels and tires one day too. But yeah, this is going to be like a father-son light resto project that we're going to be working on this summer also. So stick around.